This is the IELTS listening test. You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear. There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a conversation about furniture insurance. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. 36782901 Furniture Insurance Agency, how can I help you? Good morning. I'd like to get some information about insurance for the furniture of my house. Yes, you need to fill in the application form firstly. Can you come to our office? I'm afraid I can't. May I fill in the form by phone? Sure. Are you ready? Yes. Let's begin. OK. Let's start with the name. Could you tell me your full name? Ariel Smiley. Could you spell your last name? Yes. It is S-M-I-L-E-Y. Well, how old are you? I'm 27 years old. OK. 27. And your nationality? I come from Europe. Which country? Italy. So your nationality is Italian? Right. The next item is your present address. Well, I live in flat 21C, Willow Road, on North West Hill. Fine. 21C, Willow Road. And do you know your postcode? Of course. It is 3GJ7K. Right, Ariel. Do you have a job or are you a student now? I worked as a dentist, but now I am studying for a doctoral degree in the University of Chicago. So should I write doctoral student? Yes. What's your major? My major is accounting. A good choice. Thank you. The next one item is contact number. Do you leave your home number or mobile? Which one is more convenient for you? Mobile number, of course. My number is 3856-943-232. OK. But... What's the matter? I have a whole day class on Saturday and Sunday. OK, I know. How long do you want to ensure your contents? Mm, I'm not sure. How about one year? Fine. Now look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. What furniture do you want to insure? Well, I've bought a new laptop last week. It is worth about $800. Right, a laptop for $800. And I got a birthday gift yesterday from my father. It is a new digital camera. How much does that cost? 
The receipt said it was seven hundred and sixty dollars. Seven hundred and sixteen dollars. No, not sixteen, but sixty. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Anything else? And a big colour TV and a new fridge. For both of them. Yes. How much do you think they're worth? Let me see. At least one thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars together. Do you have their receipts now? Of course. That's okay. Anything else? Yes. The last one thing is my jewellery. I've taken some from my country. Yes. What are they? Such as jade bracelet and diamond necklace. Some things like that. So how much are they? In my mind, they are worth at least three thousand five hundred dollars. Sure. So, how much will the insurance cost? Let me see. The total cost is about seven thousand dollars, and then divided by plus thirteen percent. Right. So the insurance it comes to nine hundred dollars for a twelve-month period. Do you have any discount now? Hmm. I can help you cut down fifty dollars. So it is eight hundred and fifty dollars for one year insurance. That's right. Okay, I will take that policy. Thank you. You are welcome. Could you give your credit card number? Yes, it is three three four nine three two six seven. That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part two. You will hear a conversation about shopping. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now listen carefully and answer questions eleven to fifteen. Good morning. How can I help you? Well, I need like some advice about private car. Fine. Do you have any particular manufacturer in your mind? My present car is Toyota. Of course, I think it's not bad, but I'm more interested in BMW. Sure. What will you use the car for? What do you mean? I mean, it is better to choose the model depending on the use, such as for social use. Well, I think mainly for travel and work. I like travelling. I often drive to some tour places on weekends. Fine. What size of the engine do you prefer to? I'm not sure. Could you give me some advice? How about two thousand eight hundred cc's? I don't think I need a two thousand eight hundred cc's. The one I've got at the moment is a two thousand cc engine, but I find it's a bit slow on long journeys. So, how about two thousand six hundred cc? Fine, I think it's the best one for me. What kind of gear do you want? I mean, manual or automatic? I'd want automatic. My wife has never driven a car with manual gear. Okay. Well, now here's the colour. 
How about yellow? It is very popular at the moment in recently. My wife hopes to buy a bright colour, but yeah, I'd like to get a grey, a metallic grey. Right. Do you have any other requirement of the car? Yes, I hope to get a very good braking system. Sure, nearly each model of BMW has a good braking system, so don't worry about it. Fine. Before taking you to have a look at the car, I'll take down your details first. Sure. Now look at questions sixteen to twenty. Now listen carefully and answer questions sixteen to twenty. What's your full name? Gavin Foster. Could you spell your first name? Of course, it is G A V I N. Fine. Are you an American? Yes, I was born in New York. And your present address? I live in Madell House. Do you know the postcode? Yes, it is T K two I eight. A eight. No, it is I eight. Are you married? Yes, I have been married for three years. Do you have children? Yes, I have twin girls. Great. Okay. What's your occupation? I am a doctor of the General Hospital, a surgeon. Okay, and when would you like to start the car insurance? I am not sure about the insurance company. Factually, do you have any recommendation? How about Bright Sky? It is an insurance company with a good reputation. Fine. And the date of the insurance? May I drive the car today? Of course you can. So I want to begin the insurance from next Monday. Okay. Right. Let me see. It is the first of November. Yes. Oh, how about the annual insurance fee? Let me see. Do you have any discount now? Sorry, you know it is peak season for us now. Okay. The insurance cost for one year is four hundred and fifty dollars. Fine. The last thing is the payment. Oh right. How would you like to pay the cost by credit card? May I pay by check? Definitely. Let's go outside and have a good look at the car. Okay. That is the end of part two. You now have thirty seconds to check your answers to part two. Part three. You will hear a lecture about note taking. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty one to twenty four. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Note taking is an important skill for successful study. Today, I am going to introduce some effective skills for taking notes. Before making these suggestions, I'd like to analyze some factors that can affect note taking. Of course, the first one is your vocabulary. An instructor cannot spell all words in a class, 
So it is necessary to master a massive vocabulary for students, especially for non-native students of the English language. Good psychology is also important for note taking. Some students are very nervous in class and cannot follow the instructor in time, although they have a good ability to take notes. Well, what skills can help you improve the ability and speed of note taking? Let's begin with the first one of five steps. As usual, students can get course handouts in advance, so preparing for them will help you know about what the instructor will talk about in a class in advance to help with your note taking. A good suggestion is to use a loose leaf binder for notes, and the instructor's handout may be taken out of it. Separating notebooks for each class can help students think clearly about different class notes. Now look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Now that's the work for preparation. The second step is to put a date and title on the first page. This will help you make sure about the lecture topic and the class in which the instruction happens. Some students think this is very important for your studies later. And then I advise you to use a divider, which can set aside different parts in one notebook. For example, drawing a line in the middle of the notebook and then write the main points on the left with some extra information. On the right. According to some students' experiences, it is a good idea to use different color ballpoint pens to make different marks of the lecture in class. And now for the third step. In class, a good note taker should only write key points, not all the information. Some students cannot know what they write on a notebook after class. So how to master the key points is what's so important. These points are usually nouns, adjectives, verbs, and numbers. Writing only one to two points on each line can help you to understand the notes when you read them later. The most difficult part for nearly all students is, of course, to have enough time to write the notes. So the next step is coming. In order to save time and speed up writing, I advise you to use abbreviation and symbols instead of words, such as info for information, univ for university, dept for department, and even use a plus sign instead of an and. When your instructor speaks loudly or repeats some content or has a short pause, you should pay attention to the important points. The last suggestion is that you should review your notes after class when the information is still fresh in your mind. Try to summarize the key points and check notes with your classmates after class. That's some of the easy methods you can use to take notes. I hope that this can help you with your note taking in class. If you want to know more about the topic, please contact the study consultant in the... That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three.
Part 4 You will hear a lecture about climate. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon. I'm Stefan Ramatov, a professor of physics of the oceans at Potsdam University. Today I'd like to talk about the extreme weather events in recent years. During the last 10 years, a number of stunning extreme weather events have taken place. In 2003, the most severe heat wave, which broke previous temperature records and caused 70,000 deaths in Europe. Two years later, the most severe hurricane season ever witnessed in the Atlantic destroyed New Orleans and broke records in terms of the number and intensity of storms. In 2007, unprecedented wildfires raged across Greece, nearly devastating the ancient site of Olympia. In the Arctic, the Northwest Passage became ice-free for the first time in our living memory. After record-breaking drought and heat, in 2009, over a hundred people were killed in bushfires in Australia. There are lots of extreme weather events in 2010. For example, that summer, Central Russia had been in the grips of its worst ever heat wave, which had caused nearly thousands of deaths. Owing to drought and heat, more than 500 wildfires had ranged out of control, smothering Moscow in smoke and threatening several nuclear facilities. Another result of this heat wave was the soaring grain prices, since the Russian government had banned wheat exports. In 2010, flooding had seemed to become a main actor in the world. In China, Flash floods had killed more than a thousand people and destroyed more than a million buildings. Meanwhile, Pakistan was struggling with unprecedented flooding which had killed more than a thousand people and affected millions more. On a smaller scale, the European countries such as Germany, Poland and the Czech Republic have also suffered serious flooding. At the same time, global temperatures in recent years have been at their highest levels in records that go back 130 years. Sea ice cover in the Arctic got to its lowest point of a recorded average level for the month of June ever. Two huge chunks of ice broke off in July and August in Greenland. Are these events connected? Does this have anything to do with global warming? And are human activities to blame? Although we cannot scientifically prove or disprove that global warming caused any particularly extreme events, we can say that global warming very likely makes many kinds of extreme weather both more frequent and more severe. All weather is driven by energy, and the sun ultimately supplies this energy. But the biggest change in the Earth's energy budget by far over the past hundred years is due to the accumulation in our atmosphere of greenhouse gases, which limit the exit of heat into space. As a result of fossil fuel emissions, there is now one-third more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere than at any time in at least a million years, as the latest ice drilling in Antarctica has revealed. The changes in the Earth energy budget caused by solar variations are at least 10 times smaller in comparison. And these changes go in the wrong direction. In recent years, the Sun has been at its most dimmest according to satellite measurements since the 1970s. Therefore, 
When unprecedented extreme weather events occur, the prime suspect is naturally the biggest atmospheric change that has happened over the past hundred years, one that has been caused by human emission. It is not difficult to understand the fact that heat waves, like the one in Russia, become more frequent and extreme in a warmer world. Extreme rainfall events will also become more frequent and intense in a warmer climate. According to a simple fact of physics, as usual, warm air can hold more moisture. For each degree in Celsius of warming, seven percent more water is available to rain down from saturated air masses, and the warming climate can also be a factor of drought risk. Even where rainfall does not fall, but increased evaporation rate dries out the soils. One pattern can change atmospheric circulation is the carbon dioxide effect, which can cause more extremes of heat, drought, or rainfall in some regions, while reducing them in others. The problem is that a decrease in those extremes to which humans are already well adapted supplies only modest advantages, whereas the new extremes to which we are not adapted can be devastating. As extreme events in recent years show, the extreme events in this summer indicate how vulnerable our societies are to weather-related extremes. These conditions of global warming occur after 0.8 degrees Celsius of change. With swift and efficient decisive action, we can still limit global warming to a total of two degrees Celsius or a bit less. But even that much warming would need a lot of effort to adapt to weather extremes and even rising sea levels. With weak action and results like those promised by governments at the Copenhagen conference in 2009, we will be on a course to a three to four Celsius degree change in global warming. Many societies and ecosystems do not adapt to the warming. If we do nothing, the Earth could even heat up by between five to seven degrees Celsius by the end of the century and more thereafter. We have to face the facts. Our emissions of greenhouse gases probably are at least mainly to blame for this summer of extremes. We do really hope that extreme weather events in the summer are a last-minute wake-up call to policymakers, the corporate world, and all citizens. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have ten minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet.